So you're working on your snowplow, or your wood chipper, or your excavator, or your skid steer loader, and you blow a hydraulic hose. So you've got a couple of options. You can take the hose off and take it into the hydraulic shop, wherever that may be. You can call someone out, and they can repair the hose for you, or you can do it yourself. You've got a big project where you're replacing a bunch of hoses that are worn. This will also help you. So as an example, we've uh, got some half-inch two-wire hydraulic hose here. It's rated to uh, 4,000 psi. We've also got what we call some field fit hydraulic fitting. So field fit means you can do it yourself with very basic tools. And these basic tools are a couple of wrenches or spanners or even an adjustable wrench. What else do you need? Some comp compressed air would help. A hacksaw is plan B. Plan A is a cutoff saw or a grinder. Tape measure, also handy. Normal grease, nothing fancy. Don't need to use rubber grease. Normal. Wheel bearing grease is good. A vise really helps. And soft jaws really help. Not essential, but they help. So let's uh, assemble a field fit fitting onto a piece of hydraulic hose just to so you see how easy it is. These are JIC, three quarter JIC. This is a three quarter JIC female with a half inch tail designed to fit onto the half inch hose. This is a three quarter JIC male with a half inch tail. Again, designed to fit onto a half inch two wire hose. Specifically, a hose manufactured to SAE 100R2 specifications. All right. So, first stage on your vise. Again, desirable, but not essential. So, a little bit of lube on the outside of the hose. This is the first stage. Make sure your hose is cut nice and square. And what you want to do, if you look inside this fitting here, on this side of the fitting, There's actually a spiral. There's a row of spiral teeth in there. That's actually left-hand thread. So you have to screw the hose opposite to how you'd normally screw it in. So normally you'd screw to the right. Now we actually have to screw to the left. And you keep on screwing in until you feel resistance. As you can see, that hose is bottomed out inside the fitting. That's actually too far, we, so we need to actually back it off a minimum of half a turn. So half a turn, if the writing's on the top, screw it, screw it clockwise so that the writing's on the bottom. Okay, check if there's a bit of clearance. And that's important because you need to allow for expansion of the hose. Let's have a look at that. Okay. So, firmly clamp it in the vise. Again, the vise is great but not essential. If you're really out in the bush or the forest, you're going to have to do this supporting it on your knees. A little lubricant inside, down the hose. It's important that you have a wrench that fits nicely on the hex. Or, in this case, you could also use an adjustable wrench. 
Okay, but it's always preferable if you have used the correct wrench. Ring spanner also works, just make sure the ring spanner fits over both nuts, otherwise you're going to be in dramas. No problem. If it starts to get tight, means you're getting close. That's why a knife is that much more useful. Imagine doing this with a couple of shifters, or a couple of wrenches. Here we are, one end is done. If you actually feel this body, it's actually got warm from the friction we've just created in assembling this component. That's perfectly normal. So, if you want a specific length of hose, In this case, the hose is just under 45 inches long, including the fitting on the end here. If we wanted, for example, the hose to end to be exactly 40 inches long, how do we do that? So I'll show you. Another thing I failed to mention is that you really need something that will provide some contrast when you mark the hose. We use a, an industrial crayon. To leave a good mark. So this is actually our finished length, okay? But if we cut it there, when we assemble the hose, you're going to find that when it's assembled, it's going to be up to an inch longer than it needs to be. So what we need to do is mark the hose because we know that the hose will probably end up the end of the hose will probably end up somewhere there okay so if we want the finished length to be 40 inches we need to cut around between the E and the R I'm going to mark around the E and I'm going to cut around the E. Leave yourself a little bit of room. You can do this with a fine tooth hacksaw. If you find that your hacksaw blades don't last very long. But it is possible. I much prefer the grinder because it's quick and clean, or well, relatively clean. There will be some residual grinding dust, some residual steel dust from the wires, and that's why we need the compressed air to actually clean it out. So just... Well, that's... The grinder makes a very clean cut. So while it's in here now, let's just blast it clean. And the procedure starts all over again. Put the body in the vise. Take the rubber, the outside, and you keep on screwing in until you feel resistance.
back it off, half a turn. Lubricate inside the hose. Lubricate the thread. Lubricate the tail. So this is a male JIC, three quarter, designed to fit onto half inch two wire hose. It has a three-quarter male JIC threaded end. So, what's the beauty of a male? You can connect it to a female. So, you can connect one hose to another hose. You can also use two males, I mean two females with a male-male nipple, but it's the quickest and effective way if you've got a piece of a damaged hose and you want to cut out the damaged section, you cut out the damaged section, you screw a male on one end, a female into the other, and you reconnect them together. And you can continue to work. This is particularly important, especially if this hose snakes through a machine and it goes for six yards in that direction and 12 yards in that direction. Find the damaged section, cut the damaged section out, put a male on one end, female on the other, connect them together. Let's just see if we've made a 40 inch long hose. That's the 40 mark. How close were we to the 40 inches? It's pretty close to me. So that's it guys. These are uh, available from our website, valvehalla.com. Uh, we ship out of Ohio or Texas. Go onto the website, got a bunch of other stuff there adding stuff all the time. Again, details and links in the description below. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day. Bye for now.